dynamically um, updatable cord that you can uh, just kind of loop around. And what it's going to do is actually going to weld this uh, middle part here. So what I'm going to have is this end piece here and this cord here. Let's go ahead and go into solo mode. One thing I need to do is take this cap off. Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And the reason for that is so we've got this piece here and there's a hole there. And we've got the cord in the middle. And there's a hole on both sides of those. And ZBrush is actually going to weld all of this together. So now, one more thing I need to do. I need to make this all one subtool, but three separate poly groups. So the easy way to do that is while they're still separate, I'm going to go down here to poly groups here and group visible. Group visible. Just like this top one. Now I'm just going to merge these all down into one subtool. They're still going to be separate. They're not going to be vert welded, but they are going to be um, one poly group here. So I'm going to go to merge. With this top one selected, hit merge down. Okay, okay. So here we go. So now I'm going to create an insert mesh brush out of this, and it's super simple to do. I'm going to hit B, create insert mesh, new. And it's going to take into consideration my orientation. So I just want to have the orientation set to this side. And so with my insert mesh brush, I can actually just start inserting these meshes all over. Cool thing, though, this is where it gets exciting. Dock the brush menu over here, and we'll go dock the stroke menu over here. Open up my curves here. And if I turn on curve mode, let's go out of X symmetry, I can actually create an updatable DVI cable that you can modify on the fly. Uh, there's a couple problems. Number one, you can see it's not vert welded yet along this duplicating cord. All you need to do is go down here to brush. And we're going to do the modifiers, turn on weld points. And so now these are all vert welded. So if I hit shift and smooth, you can see it's all vert welded. Uh, it's also a little bit um, faceted in here. So we're going to go to curve res and put that up to like three. And now we'll get a nice smooth curve. And again, these are easily updated. So you can actually go in here, <clears throat> update these curves. You can drag this around. I've got, I have, uh, up here I have bend and snap on. So with bend on, it'll actually allow you to <clears throat> modify this curve. And with snap on, it'll actually snap to the underlying surface. So let's say you like this brush. Um, ZBrush actually gives you an icon for it, which isn't a bad one, but if you want, say, this to be your uh, new icon, all you got to do is go here to Brush, hold down Alt, and say Select Icon. That'll give you a new icon. And another really cool thing, if you go down here to your uh, Edit Brush Credit under the Brush menu, you can type in your name and your uh, website, which is www.halfchunk.com. I'm sorry, that's my wife's old design website, and I just kind of inherited it because we were paying for it, and then it ended up being my website. I should probably change that someday. And hit OK. And then you can just save this out save your brushes. If you save your brushes in the Z startup, it'll actually end up, every time you open up ZBrush, it'll end up in here. Or if you save it up in your ZBrush um, <clears throat> brush menu and your uh, program files, if you hit this uh, the comma key and go to your brushes, you can have your own, you can save them in here, or you can make your own, I have like a zombie folder with all my zombie brushes in it. So let's go ahead and go back out. And so that one was, this is kind of a hard edge one. Um, and I know what you're thinking, like this DVI cable is probably the coolest thing you could possibly make. However, guys that are way more creative than I am actually made some even cooler stuff. So we're gonna go in here to the, just grab, uh, so I'm gonna go B, insert mesh brush. And let's look at this uh, IMM curve. And if I hit, this is an insert multi-mesh, which we're gonna get into in just a second. If I hit M, 
it's going to bring up all these variations in this single brush. So you can have an insert mesh brush that has up to 256, I believe, um, brushes that you can pull from. So if you want to make a bike chain, I'm just going to click that. And I can, since this is a curved brush, I can just tap on this and it'll update it to a bike chain. Or I can hit a M again and you can make this a necklace link. And there's tons of really cool stuff that you can make. <clears throat> really, you saw how fast that was to do. And let's do something that's a little bit more organic. I'm going to grab a cylinder 3D. And before, right now it's not, it's, it's a uh, ZBrush primitive, and so I have all these initialized options available to me. Um, let's go ahead and go to the masking. Mask by alpha. And I'm going to mask this out. And we're going to do three sections here. Hit row. Go to deformation. And we're going to inflate this. And now that we got that all set up, I'm going to hit make poly mesh 3D so it's a sculptable 3D mesh. Hold down control shift. And I'm going to pop these end caps off here. Geometry. I'm just going to give you another really quick example. OK. <clears throat> so again, depending on your orientation, if I orient it like this and go to brush, <clears throat> create insert mesh brush, and then oops, put my stroke menu over here. Come on. And turn on curve mode. It's actually going to drag this out, but they're all going to be facing me, which sometimes is what you want if you're doing bullets or something. Um, but we don't want to do that, so I'm going to go to the side here, hit B, create insert mesh, new, turn on curve mode. And now we've got this pipe, and again, it's not vert welded yet, so we'll go ahead and fix that. Weld our points. And now we have an awesome little pipe you can do. And ZBrush is actually smart enough to make sure. If I drag out a copy of this, I'm holding control shift and drag out a copy. And then I'm going to scale this down so you can kind of see the difference. So this is all one subtool. I'm going to hit B, create insert mesh, new. Turn on curve mode. And we'll go down here to, it's going to be smart enough to say, OK, I need to weld these to this and these ones together. And there you go. Uh, so let's do something a little bit more organic here. Let's show you a couple more uh, cool things you can do. So I'm going to grab my cylinder 3D. And again, before I go out of initialize, I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to go to X size and Y size. And I'm going to increase my H divisions here. Now I'm going to go to Make Poly Mesh 3D, go into my transpose. I'm going to stretch this out just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and make a tentacle really quick. So I'm going to go across the X axis here, hold down Control Shift, and we're going to clip curve this just to get our shape going. OK, here's my tentacle shape. And I need to divide, again, we're going to have a starting point, an end point, and a middle point that uh, duplicates around. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift. And one way I can do split this up into separate poly groups. Just have this visible. And then go to your poly groups, group visible. Or you can use the slice curve, which we'll get into a little bit later. Go ahead and pop this off. So now I have three separate poly groups. And now that I have that, I can go to Subtool, Split, and we're going to do a group split. It's going to take all those poly groups and split them into their own subtool. So I can grab this middle one. And I'm going to put a, a little uh, sucker thing on here. So I'm going to hold down Control and mask this area out. I'm going to hit Control W to make its own poly group here. Uh, what that's doing is under poly group, it's doing a group mask clear mask. And actually, if you have, there's a new polish here, so if you tighten up the polish a little bit and then hit Control W, it'll actually give you a little bit smoother transition. So we're not going to do that quite just yet, but that's available to you as well. And now what I'm going to do is go brush, insert, insert H cylinder. I drag that out. What an H cylinder is is a half cylinder, so it's going to have a hole on the back. And the reason I'm using that one is what I can do is, when we get into creating the zombie, we're going to get even more into this. Since it has a hole on the back and I drag this out, wherever that hole is, ZBrush is going to go, okay, since you drag that onto this polygroup here, and it might be a little bit light, but there's actually a pink polygroup in the middle there. If you drag that cylinder out on that polygroup, and then we'll move that out just a little bit. So what you're telling ZBrush is, as soon as I unmask this, and then control drag again, it'll interpolate that geometry and kind of make that all one sculptable mesh. And it's nice geometry too. You can actually go in here and smooth this out. You can sculpt on it, no problem. And it actually does a really good job of looking at the geometry of your original mesh and the geometry of your other mesh and give you really nice results around there. So let's go ahead and use their uh, 
the tricks that I showed you earlier today. Pop this cap off here. Polygroup group visible. Control click that. And I'm gonna bring in, now again, because I am hard edge modeling, what you can do is, I'm gonna hold that control. I'm just gonna bring this in just a little bit. I'm gonna bring this in some more. I'm gonna hold down control and bring it in just a little bit. Hit W, push this in just a little bit. So what I'm doing is adding all of these edge rings. So when I go in and smooth it later, it'll give me a nice, it'll keep those uh, edges nice. And then I'll go ahead and refine my pivot here and hold that control. So again, I'm gonna go to polyframe, go to geometry. And with a smooth modifier turn on, when I hit divide, I'm gonna keep that cylinder really nice and tight. So now we have our three groups here. But I need, again, I need them all to be one subtool and three polygroups. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these polygroups here. So with that selected, I'm going to go to polygroups, group visible. Go to this top one again. And we're going to merge down. And again, this is capped. This is capped. But this middle one, because I want it to be uh, welded, I'm going to leave it uncapped. And ZBrush is going to be smart enough to go ahead and weld these after I'm done drawing out my curve. So I'm going to go hit B, create insert mesh. New. Go up here to the stroke, turn on my curve mode. It's got a X symmetry here. And we'll draw that out. And now we've got the starting, starts of a tentacle brush. And of course, it doesn't look really good right now. The first thing we're going to do is go to weld points. And we're going to need to up that curve res just a bit. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little bit better. But tentacles usually start out wide over here and then taper to the top. And you can actually do that by turning on stretch going up here to stroke and turning on size. And now we have our curve fall off available to us. So when I drag out a stroke, it'll actually have a taper. Um, if I wanted to taper the other way, like when I first drag this out, I want this, oops, this end to be fat. I can just go ahead and up this, lower this. And now it'll always be, it'll start out fat and go thin. And you can adjust the fall off as well so it doesn't taper quite as much. And then you can just uh, you know, keep updating these curves.